Welcome to, to Deja View, where we flash back over 17 years of programming on the School Channel. I'm your host and resident old guy, and today I'm a little bit confused, Gary Kramer, and with me is Diane Stowe and Amy Marsh, Hi. and we're happy to be with you. Diane and I have just returned from the Norman High School Leadership Retreat, and that's why I'm not making a whole lot of sense, <laughs> because I haven't had a whole lot of sleep. But today we're going to flash back to 1986, an important year on the School Channel, because that was a year of the token program, which was a community phenomenon in that year. It was a live, late-night program hosted and produced by two staff members here at the Video Resources Studio that year, Byron Baker and Ben Long. Now, a segment of the token program was the token soap. It was a staff-produced soap opera that Ben and Byron came up with and involved all the people that worked in the studio in this soap opera. For the next couple of shows, we're going to follow the plot line, the twists and turns, the intricacies of the token soap. In this token soap, we find Veronica in the waiting room of a hospital, unsure if her husband will live or die after the mine shaft explosion and the ambulance crash. Will anyone suspect foul play? Is St. Cloud? Yes. I'm sorry, but it doesn't look good. I'm sorry, but I was doing volunteer work in the school. No, 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 no. no. Was... I'm afraid it's a cranial bicuspid and impaction. Looks like there could be a hydrocarbon block. I don't know if it occurred in the in the mine shaft explosion or the ambulance wreck. Oh my God! What can you do? Well, there's only one man who could who could operate this close to the cranial or the spinal antebellum. Dr. Olaf Svensson. I've already placed a call to his home in Oslo. Try not to oh. worry. I'm sure everything will be fine. Oh, God, Dr. Oh, God. oh, my God, how could this be happening? A young and restless industrialist caught up in such a strange series of events as, as the world turns. Trapped in a mine shaft explosion while searching for his runaway son and rescued after a month. Rescued after everyone thought he was dead. Well, I thought he was dead. And Max hoped he was dead. And I was mad with grief. Grief that drove me into Stephen's arms. But I can't think about that now. Vladimir's dying. I've got to do what I must to save him. I must reunite his family in his hour of need. All his children will be behind him. Cassandra's in Santa Barbara. Katrina's at the Guiding Might Mission Rehabilitating Chemically Dependent Speed Readers. I Saint must Cloud? reunite them with their Dr. father. Dr. Svensson has agreed to attempt the operation. He's flying in from Stockholm tonight. But I thought he was in Oslo. He has branch offices. Doctor, what if Dr. Svensson can't help me? Try to think positive, Miss St. Cloud. He's a strong-willed man. We have his bicarbonate stabilized, and we're giving him intravenous herbal life injections. And, of course, there's always Oral Roberts. Veronica, Veronica, my dear, I came as soon as I heard. You must be beside yourself. I can't believe they found Vladimir alive, and then for his ambulance to have a tire blowout, go careening over a hundred foot cliff. You poor darling, is there anything I can do? We have to reunite Vlad with his children, Nathan. There is strength and his courage, there is will to live. Go do what you must do. I'll stay here. If there's any change, I'll let you know. You missed, you idiot. He's still alive. He's at Central General Hospital. Listen, need I remind you I paid you a lot of money for this job and you blew it. Let me say this. If he's still alive tomorrow, you won't be. Understand? Just who is the idiot that Nathan Luger is calling? And why is Nathan trying to kill Veronica's husband? 
Is Mr. Know-It-All really sick? Or does it have something to do with that knife and wrench that Ben is holding? You'll find out more on the next Token Soap. That was the first installment of the Token Soap, and it featured Ben Long, who was the writer-producer for that, along with Byron Baker, who you'll meet in future episodes, and Cindy Kaysen, who was the Director of Public Relations for the public schools in 1986, and of course, me, looking a little <laughs> different than I do now, but I still have that eyebrow thing going, a, a look I perfected when I taught middle school. You have to be able to control kids with a look, and so that was my look to keep control. So let's keep on with Token Soap, see what happens next. We see a flashback goodbye with Steven in this Token Soap episode. Will something happen between him and Veronica? And if so, what about her husband? And what's the mysterious circumstance surrounding Steven's watch? <laughs> We also learned that kind Nathan Luger isn't as kind as he seems to be. Who is he calling? And what does he have to do with Vladimir's death? You'll learn more on tonight's Token Soap. Our story begins in a restaurant, just minutes after Veronica has left the hospital. Troubled by the events of the day, she harkens back to a simpler time. Stephen, what you did to your father was wrong. It was terribly wrong. You know, you think you'd been taken prisoner, and then you'd been shot. I was guilty. No, Veronica, you're wrong. The only thing that worried my father was the prospect that his son wouldn't be a doctor. If I hadn't been caught by the Miami guys trying to sneak back through customs, he would gladly have played the part of a grieving father whose son's name popped the list of MIAs from Grenada. You're in love with him, Veronica, and your love's blind, too. You'll never see him for what he is. Stephen, maybe you're right, but I'm not blind enough to see that you don't love your father. And if you run away again, you're going to be throwing away everything that you worked for. Maybe you won't see it today, and maybe you won't see it tomorrow, but you'll see it soon, and then it will be there for the rest of your life. You're wrong, Veronica. The only thing I'll miss around here is you. Stephen, isn't there anything I can say? No, Veronica. Veronica, I've got to go. I'm catching the midnight plane to Louisville. I'll never forget you. So you come in. Sit down. Cut the crap, Veronica. I'm not here for idle chit chat. I'm here because my daddy needs me. Oh, Cassandra, can't we be friends? We need each other during this crisis. We're good at step money. If I told you what, I told you a thousand times. I think you are a money grabbing a little trap. Tell me, do you like all older men or just those with $30 million? Oh, Cassandra, someday. Someday, some, someday I'll see you with all of Daddy's money and two 19-year-old houseboys. Hi, Veronica. Hi, Cassie. Hello, General. What news from the front? Hello, Joey. How are you? Just fine. I only have two more weeks of basic training. Then on the military communication school for six weeks. That's wonderful. Six weeks. How can it take six weeks to say forward, march, and fire? Well, there's more to it than that, Cassie. I'll be writing instruction manuals and stuff. Oh, Joey. Wonderful. You'll be discharged from the Army, and you can write instructions for scratch and sniff. Oh, Joey, don't listen to her. I'm sure you'll do just fine. What will Joey do when he gets out of the army? What's going to happen between Veronica and Stephen now that Vladimir is in a coma? And who stole Stephen's watch? You'll learn more on the next Token Soap.
Well, in that episode, we met some more of the actors who were <laughs> featured in Token Soap. We met Judy Knapp, who played Cassandra. Now, Judy Knapp was Director of Public Relations for the Pioneer Mills County Library, and as such, she did some work here in the Video Resources Studio. And we met Byron Baker, who was a uh, a staff person here at the studio, and so uh, he was featured prominently as Joey, but also as one of the writer-producers of The Token Soap, and we'll see more from Byron later. I need to warn you, his character is very important, so keep your eye on Joey. Still, no one suspects that someone is trying to kill Vladimir, and what will happen to Mr. Luger when his boss finds out that Vladimir's not dead? And what's his strange obsession with chocolate? Luger waits outside the office of his boss to tell him that Vladimir is still alive. He must be in one of his moods. How did I get into this? It all started so innocently. A favor here, a payback there, a little front money, a loan. My God, now he owns me. Oh, stop worrying. He needs you as much as you need him. He could never get Veronica on the city council without my television station backing her, and he owes me. After he killed Cassandra's husband, Calvin, I got rid of the body for him. Oh, no. He's crazy. He could ruin things for everyone. Right now, we control 80% of the black market of Bavarian chocolate, and he could destroy it all with one of his insane acts of violence and revenge. I need it. No, no, I can't. If he ever suspects, if he notices any change in me, if he smells it on my breath. A little wouldn't hurt. Enough to calm my nerves. I, I won't get high. Just, just enough to steady me. He'll see you now, Mr. Luger. Meanwhile, in Ling's House of Chinese, the family waits for Stephen. Well, Veronica, let's get this over with, because Stephen's not going to show. He could care less whether Daddy lives or dies. I think he cares, Cassandra. Stephen is just shy, and it's hard for him to show his feelings. That's right, Joey. He cares. We all care. This reminds me of when Doctor died, and Father brought us all together to tell us Stephen wasn't with us then. He was blaming himself for Foster's death. Foster's death was harder on Stephen because they were twins. Like you and Cassandra, twins aren't like they're closer than regular brothers or sisters. He blamed himself because Daddy kept running around the house yelling, You killed him! Well, I don't think Dad meant it. He just gets excited easily. <laughs> Good God, Katrina. If anyone should be crying, it's me. My husband went out for cigarettes and hasn't come back for two years. Your husband, huh? Calvin loved me, and I loved him. He's dead. I know he's dead. But if he were alive, he would contact me. No matter what he was doing or where he was, he would contact me. I don't think Calvin really went out for cigarettes, Cassie. I think he ran away. Try not to think, Joey. You know how it confuses you. Let's go. This is just too depressing, and Stephen will never come. Will Stephen ever come back from Louisville? What's going to happen to Nathan Luger when his boss finds out that Vladimir isn't dead? Will Cassandra ever learn that before her husband Calvin disappeared, he had an affair with Cassandra's twin sister, Katrina? And will they ever get anything to eat? You'll learn more on the next 
token soap. Well, I don't know about you, but I could use a Hershey's Kiss about now. <laughs> Somehow I'm hungry for chocolate all of a sudden. In that episode, we met a new character, Katrina, who is played also by Judy Knapp. Judy Knapp is featured in a dual role, the, the nice sister Katrina and the evil twin Cassandra. Let's see what happens as the story continues. Stephen has returned from his quest for the meaning of life. But will Veron Veronica convince him of his love for his father before it's too late? glad that you came back from Louisville. I know now that your father is going to survive this tragedy. Veronica, I came back to see you, not my father. Stephen, why did you go to Louisville? Veronica, when I was working in the coal mines in West Virginia, I met a traveling wise man. The Bagman Street Kabarski? <laughs> yes, Veronica. The most famous of all the Polish gurus. I asked him where I could find the truth of what I was looking for. I asked him where I could search for the meaning of life. He sent you to Louisville? He must have been having a bad day. Lady, watch out! What was that? What? Meanwhile, Nathan Luger is telling his boss that Vladimir is still alive. So, Nathan, I understand you have something you want to tell me. Uh, yes, sir, I do. Well, then, go ahead. I'm a very busy man. Well, sir, it's about Vladimir St. Cloud. Oh, good. I could use some good news. I've had a bad day. Uh, well, sir. Yes, with Vladimir out of the way and Veronica inheriting all of his money, soon we'll begin our campaign. And then in no time at all, Veronica will be... Actually, sir, that's not quite it. Not quite it? How can that be not quite it? How can someone be not quite dead? Well, sir, he's... Uh, he's <clears throat> still alive. What? Somehow he survived the mine shaft explosion and the ambulance wreck. Luger, I thought I could trust your judgment in this situation. What went wrong? Well, sir, they were wrong about the eradicator. Apparently, he's not all he's cracked up to be. Luger, I can't let this go unpunished. But, sir, it, it's not too late. There is something we can do. He survived the accidents, but he is in a coma. The doctors say that there's only one person who can save him now. It's a person named, uh, 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 Olaf Svensson. Okay. But if you blow it again, you know what will happen to you will happen to Nathan Luger, and why does his boss want Vladimir dead? Why has Stephen returned, and will Veronica be able to convince him that he really does love his father? And will Veronica learn to drive? You'll learn more on the next Token Soap. We're still laughing about that episode. Did you notice in the, in the car scene that sometimes they were going backwards and sometimes they were going forwards? And we met another character. This time it was played by David Bland. Now, David was the producer for City 16. The city of Norman had its own cable channel in those days, and they shared the video resources studio with the school system. So David did a lot of his work here when he was working for the city of Norman and was drafted in to play a character on the token soap. This up... Um this episode of Token Soaps, poor Vladimir is tormented by the unconditional love of his family, while Stephen again confesses his love for Veronica, but accuses his father of deliberately breaking his heart. Will Vladimir survive one more visit from his family? Good story. Oh, 
glad I'm here, darling. You got to come out of this. I, I, I need you. I mean, ever since your accident, I've just, everything's been so weird. I'm so confused. I mean, I don't know what to do. Everybody's so strange. Cassandra, she hates me. And, and, oh, I don't know. She thinks that I married you for your money. And, well, Stephen, you know, he still thinks that you hate me. I don't understand why, but he does. And I don't know what's wrong with Katrina. But something's wrong with her, and she won't tell me what. And, well, Joey, Joey's still, we well, you know who Joey is. But, you know, Vladimir, there's Nathan. Nathan is so weird. I mean, I just don't know what's wrong with him. Ever since your accident, he's been acting so weird, and I just can't seem to figure out what the problem is. But, Vladimir, I mean, you've got to get better soon. I mean, I really, really need you to get better soon. I just can't make it without you. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I have to go, dear. I'm going to lunch with Archie. <laughs> Goodbye. I'll be back tomorrow. Hi, Daddy. It's me, Cassandra. How are we? I'm okay. The police still don't have any idea where Calvin is, but I suppose they'll fish up something. I saw that she was here. I suppose she's really happy now that your condition is worsened. Why, that little tart, how could you have married her? Why did you do this to me, Daddy? You know she was after your money. You had to know, Daddy. You just had to know. Why didn't you listen to me? You always said I was your favorite. I'll bet she had something to do with that mine shaft explosion. Pretty soon, Daddy. I have a meeting with a new detective. I hear he's very good. Maybe we'll be able to come up with something. I'll see you in a few days. Gosh, Katrina, he looks awful. Yeah. Dad, can you hear me? Don't be stupid, Joey. You know he can't hear you. Oh. Dolly, Katrina, you don't think he's going to get any better? I don't know, Joey. Give it back. That's not a look at it. No, I've always had to share everything. It's always been share, share, share. My roller skates, my ice cream, everything. Well, not from now on. Not even Daddy. I never got to do anything with myself. You were always muscling in on it. Well, from now on, I'm going to be my own man. Understand? That's right, I'm back. Returned from Louisville. Veronica called me after the accident. Apparently she feels that if we're all here, it'll somehow make you get better. <laughs> Boy, that's a good one, isn't it? You getting better because I'm here? Yeah, I'm sure you're real relieved right now. Well, don't worry, Dad, because I didn't come back to see you. I came back to see Veronica. That's right, Veronica. After all, we used to be in love before you stole her from me. You stole her from me even though you knew that she was in love with me. Well, listen to this, Dad. I really do miss you, but I have to go now. I love you. That's right. She was in love with me, and you knew it. But you didn't try and stop it when she started to fall in love with you. You didn't discourage you. You married her. But you didn't care that you were stealing her away from the son who had failed you so many times. Your son who didn't become a doctor. Your son who didn't become a great war hero. Your son who didn't win Wimbledon. Your son who lost the senatorial race. So you waited till I was away accepting my Nobel Prize, and then you took her from me. Well, Dad, I don't care if you stay in this coma for the next 200 years. How long will Vladimir be in a coma? And, and will he survive another visit from his family? You'll learn more on the next token soap.
So that episode was variations on a theme. How many ways can you unplug somebody's life support <laughs> system and it's still crazy. make it funny? So I thought Token Soap was brilliantly written, and it was written and produced by Ben and Byron, who are featured in that. And there's still some more episodes to come. This next episode, Mr. Untouchable is up to no good. Vladimir has been the driving force behind the city council. And what's the city to do without him? And what happened to Councilman Hishi? Why does Mr. Untouchable have his heart set on Veronica being on the student council? Why did I say student? I said say student. <laughs> Yes, Veronica, just wanted to tell you how sorry I am about your husband, Vladimir. As you know, your husband and I had our differences, but uh, I always respected him as a man. If our views conflicted, it was nothing personal. Uh, it was only business. Well, thank you for your concern. Now, maybe when I'll have this is helpful. Uh, you're a strong woman, Veronica, and I think you'll understand what I'm about to say. Veronica, as you know, Vladimir has been a driving force in this city for 50 years. Some people say he might even run it. I say, follow a man with vision. When he had the swamp drained to resell the land for profit, some people said he was a crook. I say it was good business. When his relatives all got onto the planning commission, some people claimed nepotism. I say, a man must take care of his family. Do you understand what I'm trying to say, Veronica? Well, I, I think Allow I... me to finish, Veronica. Without Vladimir to guide them, the city council has, how shall we say, uh, gone astray, lost direction. They're even talking of draining the reservoir so they can put in some kind of water purification system. I think that this is a bad idea, Veronica, and I know Vladimir would oppose it. Well, what can I do? There's a city council election coming up in three weeks. I want you to run for city council. But he, Councilman Hishi is our representative. Hishi's been on the council for five consecutive terms. Uh, I can't Council win. Member Hishi will not be running in this election. Council Member Hishi got an offer that they couldn't refuse. Why is Mr. Untouchable so anxious to get Veronica on the city council? You'll learn more on the next Token Soap. And to find out the conclusion to this story, you'll have to wait Till next week on Deja View as we present the last episode of the Token Soap. Let's talk about your cliffhanger. So we'll keep you in suspense for a week, but be sure to join us here next week for the final episode of the Token Soap and some entertainment from the, from the side set here in the Video Resources Studio. So until then, for Diane Stowe and Amy Marsh, I'm Gary Kramer. Have a great week. Good night.